This is a short video reviewing the basic operations for the Zener ZS3 system with the CCHS customizations. So this is a system made by Mineray and Zenari. You can see an image of the cart based system here. First of all, let's go over how to change the probes. There is the connector at the base of the system. And to change the probe, what you're going to do is turn the switch. Probe comes off. To replace a probe, place it in the dock, turn the switch, and it locks in place. The probe is now active and ready to be used. On the system, make sure the cords for the ultrasound probes are in the cord keeper, which is that metal bar at the top. And you can see the little curl at the end to prevent the cords from slipping out. If the cords are not in the keeper, they can actually reach to the level of the wheel and be run over or fractured. If they are on the keeper, you still have a good play amount of cord, but the bottom of the cord will not reach the bottom of the wheel to be run over if the machine is at full height as it does have an adjustable height. On the outcropping of the system is the on and off button. This is the panel for the ultrasound system. It features a QWERTY keyboard with function keys at the top. And this is the ultrasound interaction system. Now, the display panel here has a lot of buttons, but you only need to know a few of them. And you'll note some of them actually have stickers on them to highlight which are the important ones. But we'll go over the key buttons you need for basic functionality. These are the soft keys at the top, and you'll notice some are buttons, some are toggle switches, and some are dials. And we'll go over when the soft keys are used and what they are used for. Now, when you first get to the QWERTY keyboard, the first thing you're going to do is press number one or new patient to activate a new patient exam. You'll be brought to the patient exam screen. We're not going to enter any patient information on this with the keyboard. Instead, what we're going to use is the barcode scanner. You're going to use the barcode scanner to scan the patient sticker or the patient bracelet. Scanning the barcode will enter the ECD or FIN number to enter your user data so that we know who performed the study. You're going to scan your ID badge. The system will know whether it's a FIN or ECD number for a patient versus an ID number for a provider, and it will place them in the correct spot. You can scan multiple providers to add several operators, and the numbers will be separated by a comma. Sometimes when you scan the operator, it will ask that you have scanned the operator ID. Do you want to update the current exam? Click on the update button to add that user. If you need to manually enter the data, you can enter the FIN or ECD number into the ID tag, and you can enter the ID numbers of all the operators into the operator slot separated by a comma. When the information is sent over to QPath, the operators, meaning the residents, the PAs, and the attendings will be split into the correct categories on QPath. So make sure there is a minimum, an ECD or FIN number, and an operator number. Once you have completed this, you're going to press the exit button to exit the patient information screen. To select that key, you're going to use the trackball and the set key to select once you hover over the exit key. Other option is you can press the B button to go to B mode and imaging. You can also press the new patient exam button again to exit the new patient screen. You will then be taken to the full screen mode here to begin scanning. Of note, you can see the depth marker on the side here and you'll see the centimeter mark and you'll see numbers and individual tick marks for each centimeter there. You will see the information up here in the right upper hand corner with some important information. First of all, you'll have the date and time. You'll have the preset that you're in. You'll have the probe that is active, in this case the C41 or curved array 4 to 1 megahertz. You'll have the frequency setting you're at, and here you are have compound imaging on, harmonic imaging, and you're imaging at 4 megahertz, or the highest frequency for that probe. You'll have the output display standard, which lists the mechanical index and thermal index, which is required to be displayed by the FDA. You'll have the depth that you're imaging to, in this case, 14 centimeters. Now, you'll want to select the appropriate probe and preset to perform your study. Going back to the control panel, what you're going to do is, as you can see, number two, you're going to press the transducer button. This will allow you to select a transducer, and then you're going to go to the soft keys. The first three dials will list the three probes that are connected, in this case, the phased 41, the linear 25, and the curved 41. You're going to press on the dial button, which also serves as a button. You'll hear it click, and you'll have selected the probe that you want. Once again, on the upper right hand corner, you'll see the probe that has been selected, in this case, the curved 41. You are then going to press the exam type, and you notice that is marked number three to choose your preset. If you have changed probes, it will automatically display the different presets for you to select. When you press that key, the different presets will be displayed along the soft keys. And you will press the soft key corresponding to the preset and the type of study you want to do. You may notice that several of the presets, such as the E-Fast, the Fast, and the Aorta, are all abdominal presets. However, when you select the preset by the name, it also tags the exam type for the worksheet and QPath. So I would encourage you 
to use the soft key for the appropriate study you are doing so that it saves you time on the back end. If you need to select a preset that is not in the quick select, you can use the dial to scroll through between cardiac, OB, abdominal, and the specific sub preset that you have, such as you could go to an abdomen and a lung preset. And then you can select your preset and start scanning. Now to optimize your images, there are several controls that you will use. The first is the frequency where toggling down or up will increase or decrease your frequency. Compared to other systems which may only display a gen res or pen as far as the higher, mid, and lower frequency available on that probe, the Zonari will actually display the frequency number. So you can see here this probe is imaging now on the phased array and it's imaging at 2 MHz and you can see the 2 displayed there on the lower end of the 1 through 4 frequency range. You can see here we've moved up to a frequency of 3 MHz and we've gone up to four megahertz. So as you toggle up or down, you will increase and decrease the frequency. And that will be displayed by the number and the range will be on the probe next to it. To change depth, remember as you toggle down, you are imaging deeper and moving the screen deeper by increasing depth. As you toggle up, you are moving the display more shallow and moving up or decreasing depth. Here you can see an imaging display and a blow up of the information section. You can see the depth that's displayed here and you can see the tick marks on the right side of the screen all the way down to the 14 centimeter mark with a line for each centimeter division. Now to optimize gain, we have the option of the optimize button the little star there that is highlighted in red. When you press that button, that tries to optimize your gain settings. It may not always be perfect, but it gets you close. So when you're changing views or need to change gain, I would suggest pressing the optimize first, and then you can do cleanup and find adjustment with the B mode. So each of the modes, in this case the B mode, the button has a dial around it. Changing the dial changes the overall gain for that preset. So what you can do is press the optimize button, and if you need to do a fine adjustment of overall gain, Turn the dial either to the right to increase gain or to the left to decrease gain. You also have the option of using the time gain compensation or the sliders to change the gain. Now, the near field is at the top and the far field is at the bottom. So as you slide each of the sliders to the left or to the right, you will increase or decrease gain for a section of the image. And that is how you optimize your image, adjusting first for frequency, then depth, then your gain. To save your images, you're going to press on the save key or store key, and you can see there are actually two buttons. We have created both buttons to do the same thing. This will capture a prospective six second clip from when you press the button. You will also see a progress bar on the screen telling you as you are capturing the image. Both keys will do the same function, so you don't need to remember which one of the two to press. Unlike the previous Sonosite systems, if you press clip again as a clip is being captured, it will truncate that initial clip so it'll be shorter than six seconds and it will capture a new clip you will not lose the information. If you need to adjust the clip length, you can click on the protocol button there, highlighted by the change clip length sticker, and you can adjust the clip length. Unlike the Sonosite systems, it will only be changed while you are scanning on that patient. To capture a still image, you want to freeze the image on the screen and then press the store key. Then you will capture a still image rather than a clip. Once you freeze your image, you will, when you freeze your image, you'll see the cine mark there, which tells you that there's a cine loop that you can scroll backwards and forwards through to find the optimal still image to save. To scroll back and forth, use your trackball to scroll forward or backwards in the cine loop, and then find the image you want and store that. Once you have frozen an image, if you need to measure, click on the measure button, which is the ruler, and then you will use the trackball and the set key to adjust your caliper. When you first press the measure key, it will default to distance, and you can move the calipers, switching between the two active ends of the calipers with the set key. The active one being moved to the trackball is highlighted in green. If you need to do more complex measurements, such as a volume for bladder volume, press the measure key twice and the measurement menu will pop up. Highlight what you want to do, in this case volume, and then you will be able to measure volume. And you can see as you are toggling through and measuring, you can see measurement number one and number two displayed on the bottom of the screen. After you capture each of the measurements, such as measurement number one, press enter and you can see we have the enter calculation there to save that image before you capture number two. Then you'll unfreeze, capture the third dimension, so you have length, width, and height. And here, once again, you'll press the enter calc or the enter button, and it'll capture that third measurement here highlighted by the number three, and you'll have your volume analysis. Once you are done with the system, you're gonna press the number four key or end exam. And this will end the exam, and complete sending the rest of the information to QPath. It will ask you, are you sure you wanna close the current exam? Click on the yes button using your trackball and your set key. The other option is the yes 
option where you press enter. So it is already defaulted to answer yes, just press the enter button rather than having to use the trackball and the set key. Now there are different modes of ultrasound that are available on the Zanari ZS3 system and to activate each one, there will be the dials and the buttons highlighted here. So you can see the modes, there's B mode, color Doppler, spectral Doppler, and M mode. The button with the label will be pressed to activate that mode and the dial will adjust the gain of that mode, such as adjusting color gain or adjusting the M mode tracing gain or overall B mode gain as we have done previously. Whatever mode is currently active will be green. So here we have the activated color mode as it is highlighted in green. And you can see we have the color box on this blood vessel and we're viewing color Doppler imaging. You will display the standard color pattern of blue away from the probe, red towards the probe. The soft keys will be again used for each of the modes to change some of the settings. And there will generally be the buttons, the toggle switches, or the dials which also serve as buttons. And you can see here, you can invert the scale with the button. You can adjust your scale with the toggle switch and you can switch between color Doppler modes, switching from color Doppler velocity imaging to power Doppler imaging with the toggle switch in the middle. You can see here, we have switched the power Doppler imaging of that blood vessel to move the box. We'll be using the trackball. If you press the set key, you will be able to change the size of the box with the trackball. Pressing set again will allow you to move the box. We can then activate spectral Doppler. The soft keys will then allow you to activate triplex, change your filters, invert the scale, change your gate size, scale, and angle, and other items related to spectral Doppler, including changing between pulse wave and continuous wave Doppler. Now you can see in the sample here, we do have spectral Doppler tracing with an image at the top that shows our color and our B mode. You can see here triplex imaging where we have our real time B mode image, our color Doppler image, and we're obtaining a spectral tracing. If you press the store key while you are obtaining a tracing, it will record a clip of the tracing versus freezing the tracing and saving a still image. M mode is activated by pressing the M key, which will then create your M mode spike. Unlike other systems, such as the Sonosite, you can have real time B mode imaging and M mode tracing at the same time. Once again, pressing store will capture a clip of the video compared to freezing and saving a still of the tracing. Post-processing for all of your images are to help reduce artifacts. And this is commonly what we talk about tissue harmonic imaging and compound imaging. Now you may be familiar with compound imaging being referred to as multi-beam, which is a proprietary name on the Sonosite system. You may want to turn off these post-processing images, especially when you are doing pulmonary or lung scanning. To turn harmonics on or off, you're going to press the TH button, labeled harmonics, which is next to the time gain compensator sliders. Compound imaging is on the soft keys, and you'll see one of the buttons has compound on or off. And as you press the button, you'll toggle between compound imaging on or off. And you can see here on these three information displays, Next to the frequency, you have compound and harmonics are on, meaning C and H are both displayed. You have harmonics on, compound off, and you have both compound and harmonic imaging off. If you're doing ultrasound guided procedures, you also have the option of beam steering for the needle visualization, something that was not readily available in all the Sonosite systems. You can see here a phantom model with a blood vessel and a needle, and you can see that you can see the needle and the needle tip well in the phantom tissue, but it may not be as clear as you would like. You have several options when you have the linear probe active. You have the option to change between rectangular and trapezoid imaging. You can see in this image above the toggle switch, rectangular imaging is active. If we were to hit that switch, we can then switch to trapezoid imaging, where we have a more trapezoid sector rather than a rectangular sector. What this does is some of the ultrasound beams are angled slightly towards the needle and provide more reflection, making the needle more visible. You also have the option of beam steer, which is next to it, and you have either no steer, a negative steer, or a positive steer. And what you want to do is steer the beam towards your needle. So you can see here on the left side of the screen near the indicator, the sector is somewhat slanted. That means the beam is steered towards that needle. And you can see now the needle is much brighter as more sound is reflecting off that needle back to the probe to create a better image of the needle and the needle tip. You can see here we have steered the beam away and the non-indicator side is slanted, meaning the beam is steered away from the needle and less sound is reflected off that needle back to the probe, making the needle less visible. Here you can see all three images. On the left, beam steered towards the needle, creating a brighter image. In the middle, no steer. And on the far right, beam steered away from the needle. And while it does not take you from no visibility to ideal imaging, it does provide some changes that can highlight the needle in some difficult situation. So once again, your interaction with the ultrasound system for information and settings are gonna be based on this input display panel. You have the full QWERTY keyboard with function keys at the top, most notably new patient and end exam, and the system operation buttons, which have been highlighted 
for the ones that you need on a frequent basis. Remember, ultrasound is dynamic imaging. Don't be afraid to attempt to optimize your image. If you do not optimize it, you can always undo what you did and try something different. If you have made major changes in your ultrasound imaging setting and you don't know how to reset it, change your exam type to return to default settings.